do this. So this is something I've been creating this week. So I'm not going to go over anything like what this does, but I just want to say like this is what I have. And like this is something like a very simple app that does something very specifically, but it has a lot of working components. So for example, in this instance, you upload an image or you upload a, something to the data, right? In this case, you, you would click like a date, right? And when it, when it does that, um, I have it printing over here, kind of what's going on. This, this isn't necessarily so useful for uh, you guys, but it is useful for like a user, right? It isn't useful, it isn't um, necessarily straightforward kind of how to do this, but for a user, I wanna know like stuff's happening. I wanna know progress, right? I wanna know like, hey, this is just sitting here because it's reading, it's downloading the data from QuantMod, or it's running my model, or something like that. Like, because if it's just like sitting here and not doing anything, then I, as a user, assume something broke, right? Or it's just insanely slow. And it can be insanely slow, as long as I know something's happening and something didn't just break. Okay? Does that make sense? Um, and then like, I'm gonna show you like simple stupid things I did in the sense you click a button and when stuff starts happening, it shows a little progress bar. Or by a progress bar, I mean a twirling icon next to it. Um, so, and these are different tabs for different stages or certain like, well, like here'd be like a table, here'd be like the plot, here'd be like something else, right? So, and then once everything's done, I can download something out from R. So this is the kind of stuff I'm saying, not super complicated, but different components showing me that you would be able to export something for a user. You'd be able to plot something for a user. And the export thing could be the plot, could be the table, like a CSV table. Does that make sense? No, yes. Yes, okay. Okay, let me go back to Uh, so, you should have Shiny, right? I mean, that's the most basic package you need for all this. Um, and you probably want to use the date input function, right? So that's probably what I would start out with, right? And so stop me at any time if you guys aren't like comfortable with the, so again, Two uh, I'm, I go with the, the system where there's a UI file and a system file, right? That's, that's the predominantly main way Shiny apps are conducted. There are ways to write it so that UI, the UI, the user interface, right, UI, is actually like a whole expression and the server is a whole expression and then it's like all one thing, one file. I don't recommend that because it segments like, this is stuff the user sees, this is stuff the... R code does, right? Okay. So for example, I'm just working off of obviously the, uh, I'm working off like the base example to give me, date, like of it now. Uh, so analysis day. So the part about the date input that I don't understand is mm -hmm. that so in the app, you'll see a calendar, but when the app loads, it's going to load to the, today's date as the default. Does that mean like when you pull up the app originally, it's going to make a prediction automatically for today's date before the app tries to open? Like I, that was the part I couldn't figure out. Like, so it's null. Out? Okay, so right here it says null. So almost... All, a, a lot of defaults in Shiny are null for like what the thing is loaded. So let, let's let's yeah. do that, right? So, did you want to say something? I was just going to say that you can specify a different start date tomorrow. But you, you're well, asking like, whether... I'm asking if it's going to start predicting. So that's a good question. So what I would recommend is if you don't want it to do that, yeah. you set it as null, and then in your code you say, if it's not null, do this. Does that but make sense? Null is the current date. The starting date, either a date object or null. We oh, we use the current date. So okay. Like it's always taking a date. Like, how do I get to say like 
Just open the app. Don't do anything. Oh, okay. So there's a su uh, submit button. Check. That's a good question. So a submit button will change all the... So, okay, there's there's a lot of things that are very, very confusing about Shiny. One of them specifically is reactivity. Okay? We're not going to get into necessarily what reactivity is, but the idea is when you change something and you don't have, for example, like a submit button... Shiny automatically thinks, hey, you changed something. I should start running stuff that depends on that, okay, unless you wrap things in a certain way. Now, usually, a lot of times, that's what you want to do. Sometimes, when you have, like, 8 to 20 different, like, toggles and switches, you want people to be able to set their parameters and say, go. That's what a submit button will do. Okay, does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. Where did it go? I think I get how it works for, like, everything. I have a submit button, and I can get it to work for like other visualizations of the data that aren't date manipulations. And so I think I'm just I want to make sure that with a submit button, it won't do any. A submit? What do you mean? It'll so do like, stuff. So, so when the app opens and you have a submit button with a date, mm -hmm. it will show nothing until they select a date and hit submit. Is that correct? I believe so. No? no? I have a submit button right now like that, and it will do it on the date. It'll run my code on the date that I currently have as a default, and then you can change it, and then once you click submit, it will but it'll, it'll run it first. So like when you're Before opening you the app, it's loading that whole time? Yeah. Okay, that's what I wanted to avoid. Like, I was trying to see if there was a way around that. To like have it open and not run anything, so you can show them that something is running. Because otherwise, it's just loading the app the whole time. Right? And there might be another way with the submit button, submit button. But just like the default, like kind of submit yeah. button, it'll run it first, yeah. and then you can change it. So. Yeah. Yes. Um. Okay. You know, I get what you're saying. Yeah. Uh. Yes. So, the one option. Well, I. I so here's a dumb answer. Take sys.date, add one, oh, and just be like, if it's in the future, or no, maybe not that, maybe that's not a good example. Um, or set it to like 1960. Like something like very silly. Set it to something being like, hey, uh, we go from 1980 onwards, I don't know, with your data, right? It's like, and it, if it's if it's less than that, so like, let's say you set the default to be like, or the, the value to be like January 1st, 1980. You mean the default calendar date, the start? The start date, value in date input. And you say it's like 1980. And in your code, you say, if it's before like 1980, we can't like... We don't predict, okay. right? Or like like the last month or something like that. Or to add um, a couple of lines um, making a note that our date is back the day after they took the No, but that only happens after the app loads initially. So like the issue would be getting apps open without running a prediction first. But that's what I'm saying. Yeah. So you check the date first. Yeah. Um, that is an interesting... I mean, I don't think it really matters for this project because as long as we tell you guys somewhere that it will take a while to open, I don't think that that's like a huge issue. But yeah, that's a good, it, de it may also depend on how you set it up. So the other option is not a submit button. So, there, so there's a submit button, which is like this overall thing, and like you click it and stuff happens. A more general version is called an action button. Okay? So, an action button, not surprisingly, actions happen after you click the button. Right? So these things, uh, I don't know why I'm going over there. 
the things I showed you, like uh, when it like changed, like spinny thing, and blah, 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 those aren't submit buttons. Those are action buttons. And the difference between those is those start out, uh, they're, when, what they're returned as is numerics. So like, for example, okay, let's, I don't know. All this stuff is like really obtuse, like unless, or just really just abstract unless we just start doing it. Okay, uh, action button. Run stuff. Don't mix. Don't mix quotes. It's never a good idea. Uh, okay, run stuff. Great. So, do we have to set them in for? Our, I, I don't even. Remember. Data input. Do you set them in, or does it like do stuff? Just like go. Okay, whatever. All right, and then get this crap out of here. I'll keep this plot. Uh, don't want any of that. You're set. Okay, so get date reactive. Can you see? Yeah. Okay. Um. Add dot date. Input. I don't know. Does it come out as a class? Whatever. I'll print so it So that's out. how we have to get the. That, that's another thing that I was stuck on, like how to actually get the date and put that into our function at the time. Like we have to say that it's reactive or something. Uh no, not necessarily. Uh, I'll talk about reactives in a quick second. Okay. So this is like a. This is like kind of defining a function. It's not, sorry, it's not. It is It is a function. It's just different. It's, so, Chinese weird, right? Chinese non-standard R stuff. So, a reactive, um, so let's say a user changed, like, everything but the date, right? Change like like there's sliders and all this other stuff in there. Let's say you put a bunch of stuff in there, but they never change the date. And like this code chunk, right, that plots something about the date only depends on the date and not other stuff. So okay, like a slider change, a checkbox change, all this other stuff changed, but the date never changed. Okay? So if, for example, right, let's do it two different ways and I'll show you what I mean. Okay, so let's uh Plot uh, zero zero main equals input run date. That's, that's probably the dumbest app I could do. That's good. Okay, it plots right. I click the third and it plots. It's great. I did not set up this action button yet. Okay, so that did not. Do what we were talking about. So I'm gonna do print input run stuff. So now I'm okay. So here's a quick thing I want to show you about shiny print. Print will go here. Uh, like when you print something in an object, it'll print it to the R console. It's not gonna print it to like the shiny screen. It's not gonna print it on the web page. Does that make sense? So, okay. Here's what I want to show. Run stuff. Run stuff is a shiny action button value, so I just printed it out. But the, the most important part of it is that when you click a button, it starts out as zero, and once you click it, it adds one. Right? To the value. When you return a button's value, so this is a button. Run stuff is defined as a button over here. Okay? People know what I mean by that? Okay, so when you say input run stuff, it returns a zero before it's been clicked. After you click it once, it gets a one. After you click it twice, it gets a two, so on and so forth. Does that make sense? For the duration that the app is open. For the duration the app is open. Okay. So with that, you can say, for example... Like, where's, where did I get plot? So, if input run stuff uh, is greater than zero, then plot. Else plot zero, zero, main. 
nothing happened. And this would be in your ins in the instance of our data. So that would be the default before they've. This just comes up, and it's just like, hey, everybody, we're not doing anything until you click that button. So it would have to be an action button, not a submit button. So submit button. Well, I don't know. I I I. I I'm not, I haven't used date inputs so much. Uh, I would highly, re don't use like a text box where they have to enter a date. That's like, no. Dates are one of the hardest things to get people to enter correctly. Well, it's the same thing you use there, but I mean the difference between a, the difference between a submit button and an action button, right? Because you're using an action button. Let's see what submit button even does. I mean, I want to see, I want to see what it returns. Sub button. Okay. So it's null by default. But if you click it, is it no longer null? Okay, apparently, no, I, I apparently <coughs> defined that wrong. Because the submit button just has text, doesn't have an ID. Oh, okay. Interesting. So that's not really that helpful in the sense you can't grab what if it's been clicked or not. But um, here, let's let's go back to this. And sh so let me just show you guys what everybody's talking about. So in the one instance when I had that if statement, this right here said nothing happened, which means the code wasn't run, right? That had an if statement that if in that if, if statement right here, if I, ha if I open this back up and I put all my fun code here, right, then um, nothing would have ran, right? Because this action button, it has to be greater than zero. It has to already have been clicked, okay? Now, um, I think what... Gina and Jordan have described that I don't know if you guys have gotten to yet. In this instance, when you have a date input and you didn't even do anything, you didn't tell it to run anything, it runs the code for whatever date is the default, which is what you guys don't want, especially if it's like heavy calculations, right? If it like has to run a model, refit a model, do any of that kind of stuff, you want things to just load up and not necessarily run yet. Um, for your app, I would say. You want people to select it and then say run. All right, so we, you can note here that I change stuff around, but nothing is changing over here until I click submit. Um, okay. The Okay, so is that clear? At least what, what's going on? By default, it's like loading up and trying to run stuff. I believe there might be two, there's I think two ways we can get around this. One is to use an action button, right, versus a submit button. The other way I believe, which I'm not 100% sure yet, is to wrap things in a reactive. Uh... Okay, so let's make it very, let's, let's get some of this, let's get actual like quamod stuff back in here. Come on. Okay, so I've stopped. Okay. So who's started this? Who started their shine yet? Okay. 
So I think this is my other like conceptual question is where the code goes. Yeah. Well, that's probably stupid, but like at this point, what I've been able to do is create a shiny app that shows a data table that I, in the way that I would want it to appear. Yes. But I can't figure out how to get it to actually do like the calculations. Like to use a function that I have or like use any code. Like, I don't, I guess I just don't understand exactly where that goes. Yeah, that's a, that's a good question. Um, and how to, like, integrate the user inputs into, like, the data yeah. part, into the function. Like, have that be fed into our function. Like, I'm assuming that would be the simplest thing you use a function you've already created. Yeah. Um... So, hmm. yeah, God, it's so kind of like, but um, I don't know. so there are a few things. Okay, so you can either have the code kind of wrapped around a like a render statement in the sense of render plot, a render text, a render table, right? So, okay, um, let's do let's do a lovely table. It's just going to print dates because I'm trying to do simple things here. All right, uh, so my tab, render table. Okay. I want to get uh, my dates is seek, where is the run date? I think that'll work. I'm not 100% sure. But my dates So all this is going to do This doesn't even make sense for your project, but you know what I mean. I'm just making a table. Simple. Uh, okay. Apparently it doesn't like that. Oh. So. Okay. Look at that table. Looks great. Right, obviously the, date, the dates aren't. Um, Steven getting some cake. Uh, so we got some. Yeah, all right. So we see that um, the code ran and we get this table out here. So the question is where to kind of put the code. So you can either put the code in when I'm calling something like a render. Like a render thing. So either you're rendering a table, you're rendering a plot. So it's running all the code, running all the code. Yeah. But you probably don't want to do that. And this is the way I'm going to suggest if you have pretty complicated or pretty lengthy calculations going on, to do something like this. And it's going to be a little bit um, confusing at first, as most things in Shiny are. So, for example, I'm gonna do so. I'm gonna do two things, and then I'll describe what I have. Serve uh, if you click this button. Um, 
values. Okay. So this is the way I tend to do stuff in Shiny where I have to run code in general. So I create this list of reactive values. So it's just it's just like a list of like outputs from code in the sense that I want to use in like different kind of code chunks. So values is just like this empty list that I created. Okay? So, and then you do it, you put things around in what's called an observe statement. So, when let's say right here it's I'm going to download all the quant mod data, something like that. Okay, and then I put let's say I had two buttons, one being like download all the quant mod data. Okay, does that make sense? Right, one that's like get me all the data and wait. Okay? And then the next the next one was predict on the data. Right? Predict. And then I would say like hey is values hey if is dot null hey or if it's not null then you can do all your stuff. And uh, okay so let's say list of Let's make it not hey, list of stocks, list of stocks, run my prediction. Like pred equals predict model, list of stocks, for example. I'm commenting that out because it doesn't make sense right now. So, created just this empty list of stuff we want to read and write out to, right? It's just a list that kind of, um, you can think of it as just your normal standard R type of list, more or less, okay? So, this line here, when you click a button, when you click the button, it says, I'm going to do, I'm going to download all the data, I'm going to merge it, I'm going to transform it, all that kind of stuff, okay? Now, by default, I say list of stocks equals null, okay? So I say this object in this list has a value of null. So why am I doing that? I'm doing that so later if I try to run something where it's like, hey, predict on this list of stocks, it gets out the list of stocks from this list, and it says, if it's not null, then do stuff. Right? So it's saying, you can't try to predict on this list of stocks unless you've gotten that list, gotten a list of stocks from Quant. Does that make sense? But I guess in our case, we're giving it the list of stocks anyway. So we well, sorry, I, I wrote a list of stocks, and that's probably a bad, uh, stock data is really, oh, is really what that should represent. Right? Um, okay, so it's actually like stock data. So in here, you'll have like get symbols, stock ticker, right? Something like that. Source is like Google or something like Yahoo, right? And you do all that kind of stuff where it takes data from an environment or all that kind of stuff. Or what most likely you should have is like data equals like my function, my get data function date. Like input run date. Right? So like where does that function come from? This function? Yeah, how can we reference? So you can source, so have a different R file, like myfunctions.r, where you define 
my get data function. Does that make sense? So what happens is shiny starts up. It says do 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 do. And that's in the same working directory. That's in the same working directory. So like you're saying, we would probably have functions that would do it in a stepwise. You can yeah. That's what I would suggest. The other thing is, you could wrap it in a whole package. I'm not suggesting that. I'm saying just have a list of functions, or like have like ten sources. Like I get data function. This is my processing R file. Sure. Um, and you can load the stock source. So you can load data that's in that working directory. So does that make sense? So when Shiny boots up, it's going to boot these things up, and it's going to have your function loaded. Right, so you can reference those functions still. You can reference that data still. Right? Okay. So, what I'm saying is, you can have a button here that says, okay, somebody clicked it. I'm going to run it. Okay? And you can... Um, so I'm not sure what I have to double check right now is to see if I can put that back to zero after it's run, right? So like if you click a button, it's greater than zero, right? It says you clicked it once. But after that, you probably want to reset it back to zero, right? Afterwards, right? In the sense, you want to say do all my fun stuff and then say input run stuff equals zero. I'll see print input run stuff. Okay, let's get this. Oh boy. Yep, that makes sense. So the reason that failed is because this function doesn't exist. That file doesn't exist. So it's like, no, I don't know what you're trying to do. Oh, that's fun. Attempted to assign. Yeah. So you can't reset it to zero. But I think in the reset button, action button. Not at this time. Blah, 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 blah. So yeah, then there's this isolate stuff which I'm not even that like comfortable with. Um, so you can, what you can do is like, you can disable, you can disable a button afterwards, if that's what you want to do. Um, all I'm saying is if they click this that shouldn't be a problem actually this shouldn't actually uh, why are you trying to check if they clicked it because why uh, what I um, like I want that around here Does that make sense? Uh, I want it to like not do anything by default. Right, uh, okay. Right, to just give you like nothing. See, the problem is I don't want every time you click it. Anyway, who cares? We're not. I'm only going to click the button once. 
that's not that's not the best answer I'm going to give you. Um, but for right now, just try to get it to work. And if it loads, if it, the preloading time is what you're concerned about, you can try an action button. Uh, you can try. I'm trying to think about what happens. Like no default submit button. So the other option is you put things Sorry, there are these two other handlers. They're called event handlers, right? This this is like pretty. It's not technical stuff, but I'm saying you can wrap everything in this, so that it says don't do anything until you observe this event. Okay, and this event would be submitting a button. So this is useful. Okay, so here can take an ignore null parameter that affects behavior when event expression evaluates to null, or in this case, action button zero. In this case, if ignore null is true, then an observer event will not execute. Um, this is useful if you don't want the, to do the action or calculation when your app first starts, but wait for the user. Um, so you put ignore null equals true. Right? So, for example, if nothing happens, nothing will. Sorry, if nothing. If you wrap everything around an event reactive, right? AKA, only do this stuff when an event occurs. In this case, that event is someone clicking a button. Does it tell you what it does if they don't click the button now? It doesn't do anything. It starts up completely blank. Oh, oh. So you don't have to specify, like, put in something. It just is nothing. Yeah. So this is probably something better to send you guys, right? So instead of observe, so what do we call it? Run stuff. Right? Print out. Wrap like all of the code in that, like one big. Because we only care for a startup, right? That that one. only really. Uh, no, yeah, you can wrap the whole code in here. For example, like this will return whatever you want. DF being D, so DF in this case, DF is a function. And I'll put that in quotes, right? You call it with parentheses, okay? So, like, let's say, for example, you want this data frame, right? But let's say it would be, like, uh, you want to return, like, table equals this and, like, points for scatter equals like df2 is c you know um, df2 equals df df2 y is r norm 5 something like that you want it to return two things so that when they click a button you can either get out the ranks or the plotting stuff here I'll show so render table is df table what did I call it? My tab. And where was the plotting? So if so, DD, so points equals DF.
plot zero zero and the last ten minutes we don't have to go in like necessarily specifics and stuff like that. Okay. All right, let's observe kind of what <laughs> God's name is going on. Okay, so starts up, nothing happens, right? We don't have a plot, we don't have anything like that. We can change the date, nothing will happen until you click run, then it will plot the stuff you want and make the table. So in this instance, it would be processing, downloading, all that kind of stuff. Does that make sense? Uh, okay. I don't know what the... Wait, wait, you still have the observe thing, though? I thought you changed... Sorry, this is... Sorry. This stuff, this stuff isn't relevant anymore. Okay. It's not running. Okay. All right, so I'm going to go around. Steven, what is this doing? What is the event reactive doing? Okay, how would you find out? Somebody tell me what the event reactive is doing. Like, why do I even care about this? Runs the code. It's looking for inputs. It looks for user interaction. Right? The user interaction is just a button click. Alright? Then it does all the code. So you're waiting to create the data frame. So like if you don't click the button, there is no data frame, right? Is that correct? DF will return. Because you're referencing the data frame to make a table and the plot. So if there's no data frame, nothing. The, if the, if you put null, if you say return like that, in either of these things, here, I'll just show you. If you say that, it pretty much doesn't matter what you do. Nothing. Ooh. Oh, the plot still will happen. Sorry, returns are different for tables and plots. So plot, it's like, whatever gets plotted, I'm throwing it up on the screen. But if you return an empty, an empty nothing to a text or a table, nothing's ever coming out. It's not that it prints out something and says, like, null. It prints nothing. Okay. Right? So, like, if tab... One, uh, what is this? Tab. No, that doesn't, that doesn't help. If, run if, what, one? Okay. I don't know why, oh, because I zoomed in like a thousand times. It's like, why does this look so weird? So in that ins so when I clicked it again, like, because I'm just saying, like, if it's greater than whatever, I'm just making it randomly come on and off. So in, one, in this instance, it returned the table, and the other one, it returns nothing, because this is just a, right, a random coin flip. So all I'm just saying is when it returns something greater than 0.5, return nothing, the table disappears. It doesn't return anything. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah. So if you don't want something to happen, you do this. But in this instance, when, when, when it first starts up, this just gives nothing back. 
So even though it went into the loop that you had, can you put that stuff back on there? Yep. So like you said return, and then you still said tab, and it did it printed nothing. So. So this, whenever you say return, whenever whenever a function hits return, everything else is irrelevant. Okay. It, it supersedes everything past it. In the loop. In, the in anything like like so. If this doesn't happen, this will return tab, right? Right. Oh. If, the, if this code gets executed, it returns, exits the function, end of the day. Yes. Right. Got it. Okay. So, pretty much the event reactive will have it so that when you boot up your code with the default date, nothing happens. Okay? Does that make sense? Um, the problem with the submit button is that you can't reference it, which I think is weird. I don't know why. So just make an action button versus a submit button so you can actually re reference it from input. Okay, makes sense. I don't know. What other shiny questions do you have? All right, so it's... I have a question about the, this project. This might be a question for Jeff. So I'm wondering if I can just use my data set that I have to run the models yeah. and load that. Is it okay with that? Or do I have to like um, grab the data set within the shiny? Does that make sense? Or so um, here's the thing. If your model requires previous data, right? So, okay, let's say I'm, I'm, I want to know today's prediction, okay? What your function has to do, you can have your models already set. I don't care. You don't have to refit models necessarily, right? Well, I thought he said that he wants us to run the model in the shiny app. The, like the predicting. Run the prediction in the okay, shiny app. Prediction. So the the model, it doesn't matter if the model is there. It doesn't. You may get theoretically better model fit right if you rerun the model with all the data up until you kind of know but um, that's not how it's commonly done I mean in like in like if you were to predict stocks that's what you would do um, that is more work that on for the app um, you have to you just have to be I'm going to say smart about the data. It's just you have to figure out how to... So this is what I've been trying to... I tried to figure it out in like a half hour in class, but I didn't figure it out, where you have a data set with all the stocks and all the information up until a certain date, right? If actually one of you... If you, one of you guys can send me that, like, a, like that, the data frame that you use to fit the models, whatever that, whatever that may be, Right, it's like one columns like day before that kind of stuff, and ha and the code you use to reshape it. I can write a function that says, figure out what I got to add to this data set to go. Does that make sense? In the sense that what you want on a specific day is potentially all the data that you need to predict or refit. Those are one and the same, usually. I'm saying so you don't have to re-download the complete data set. You would only have to download from like start like from two weeks ago to today. Well, I guess the thing is when that, you download yeah. from two weeks to today, it takes about the same amount of time as if you're downloading the entire data. That's set. true. So, so you might as well just do it all. Just do it. Yeah. yeah. I so mean, you, like the full data, even if you were to refit the models, oh, never mind. Never mind. So yeah, that's the thing. You're going to, it's going to take time. So you're going to, because you're going to have to create the covariates for all the the stocks again, mm -hmm. which means if I do tomorrow, if I do today, and you have a lagged one return, right, the return from yesterday as a predictor, which you most likely will, then you got to grab that data. So, because I guess my function right now is set up where if the date that it grabs is before a certain day, then 
I just use the data that I already have, which is which I use to define. That's a after a certain day, then I grab the data from. That is a smart way to do it. So I'm wondering, can I just use that then? You can use that, yeah, because that data is not changing. Right. Yeah, use that. I would say if you've like the data from up until like the fifteenth. And somebody tries to predict on the 14th, and yeah, use that. I, I think that's a good idea. And just say, you know, and that's something that I would probably put in the app to be like, whatever, where are we at? Okay, so just like, uh, sorry, H2 or 4 data before. 2015, 11 will run faster as it is preloaded. Something like that. You know, or you can just say P for a uh, paragraph. If you don't. So these are all just like uh, the other thing, if you were to make a real, like if you're going to make a real app. My suggestion is so there, are, and I'm not. I'm, we're not talking about the project necessarily right now. We're talking about like if you're going to make an app. I like there's things called tab sets, right? So a tab set is you have like a bunch of tabs. The first one I always I, I would always say should be the description of like what is going on in this app. What is the goal? What do you have to do as a user? Right. So um, usually what I do is like. Tab, tab set, why is it being so annoying, why does it not want to, I don't know, it doesn't want to do that, but ID is my tabs, right, and then I would have something like Tab panel description, right? And then I would have something that is just a description of all that stuff, right? HB, here is my description. Output. Here's my description of what's going on. Here is the output in which you get. Right, so you get one being like my table, my ranks, and then being like plot of stuff, right? Because usually, whenever anybody like loads up this page and you see like a plot, it is not very clear what you're supposed to do. So, a description page, for like if you were to make an app, I think is very useful. Um, like for example, you could write in there and be like, okay, the user does this, it returns from the quant mod package. Again, not necessary for this project, in my opinion, but you can say like data from this date, you know, runs faster. Period. Um Yeah. Well I try I try I, I didn't have time, but I tried to make a cron job on my own machine. Which like every day it would download all the quant mod data for that day and like upload to GitHub, but I can't. I didn't have time to figure it out. It takes yeah. So, um, because otherwise you could just grab from that GitHub repo, right? Rather than have to download all the data again, it would be like one centralized point. But um, I just don't have time. Sorry. Um, I, if I do get that working, I'll let you know. Um, Okay, so um, what was I going to say? Okay, so is it kind of clear what's going on? You have an, the observe event, event won't run anything until you say so, and all the code will be in here, right? To get all the data, to run all the things, right? Does that make sense? And then you can reference that with this little parentheses, right? Because it treats it as a function, right? And it's a little strange, I agree. And you can grab the things from the list, 
right? Just with the dollar sign. So one more clarifying yeah. question. So like if we make functions, those would go inside, like uh, functions for cleaning and predicting, yeah. they would go inside reactor values? They would, or, you, or just source them at the beginning. No, but like... Sorry. Well, yes. No, we would re be referencing them somewhere. We would use the input date. Mm -hmm. And so the function wrapping the input date would not be in event reactor. Because otherwise... So I thought it was going to be like... Like... Clean data equals my clean input date. Yeah, that's what I'm asking. So that's where. Like that's where you'd put it, and then be like, my predict is my prediction function clean data. Yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. And then it's like, you know, whatever another function to get the results or whatever to get to get the points for a scatter plot or the table like my tab is my tab function does that make sense yeah. so okay put it to the barest bones it needs to be what you need is a function that takes a date and predicts the ranks, right? That's it. The ranks for the five day and the one day. So still, I have all that. It's just like you have that. Into the app. Yeah, it, it it's it's. I thought it, it was is, close, and then yeah. Well, no, I mean whatever. <laughs> then okay, set it up like Jordan has. Set it up like Jordan has in the sense that you don't have to re-download da the data I unless. Have, that's what my function currently does. Like, the but how long does it take to predict? It shouldn't take that long. No. I mean, is it like, like some? Oh, the, you're the, it's a gam. Jesus, <laughs> that's why gams. The gams take well, a long time to write, predict. I did write a forest. I, I think that's what takes the longest. Yeah, okay, but I mean, it takes like ten minutes. You have the model saved, or are you? I have time? everything saved. It's just like. So what I'm saying is, you like when you say the date, don't keep it like just set it to a date before, yeah. right? Or, or like, even dumber, have one day that's your default, right? Yeah. I that mean, you have already all the predictions for. Like, if date is default date, just plot everything straight up. Yeah, I just couldn't get it to reference my function. Oh, <laughs> like this, sure in, like this like input, like this. Yeah. Ah, okay. But I think I just was, I have to. But like that's an easy thing. Like if date is this date, which is my default date, just plot all the results. Like give me something nice to look at to start up, and there's no startup cost because you've already pre-computed it just for that specific date. Yeah. That makes sense too. So it doesn't show nothing. It shows the results, but for that specific day. So it already gives the user like a good idea. Like oh, this is what it would look like. Um, but just put like caution. Be like yeah, it's not going to be that fast because I have to do all this other stuff. This right. one's pre-computed or something. Right, because that's like while loading up the app. Yeah. Yeah. Does that make sense though? I mean, that that might be a good way to do it uh, with the date, with with the default date, because then it like actually does the result. Yeah. You can, it automatically tests your other functions, right? And then and then try dates before that because you already have that data stored in memory. You don't have to grab more off QuantMod. And the reason I wasn't going, to, the reason I was a little hesitant to try to get this like master data set on GitHub is if your data, for some reason, you format it in a very slightly different way, everything could break. Yeah, and you'd have to probably. figure that Yeah. So. Like at this point, the project is like, I don't think I could. No, like, just. Like, mentally, like, figure out how to work with a new set of data. Just say, <laughs> load my data. This is my getting new data function. If I need to call it, I can call it in here if it's past this date. Should we be concerned about being able to throw errors if you select a weekend? A weekend? <laughs> um, that's a good... I didn't think of holidays. Because I have that functionality. You have holidays? I have holidays. I have that in my... two years. I have that in my original function, but not holidays. Because <laughs> <laughs> I have every... Well, yeah. Um, Sundays are the closest. 
So what happens then? There's no data for that day. Can't, well... Well, there would be data, like the model would still run because there'd be stuff from before, unless it's a Sunday. Right. Um, But like, are you guys going to like you looking to see if our app can handle that stuff? Or should we just assume that you're not going to like try to make our app? Assume that we're not... Some remembering that the data will break on that, and if I just click something and something explodes, I'll be like, oh, that just exploded. Bad. And I won't think about it. I'm just saying, like, the problem with Holly, just just do some, just have a very simple case that just says, like, look for data. If no data comes up, just print out a message on the, like, just put a text output, right? So render text. And render text will be nothing, if there is data, it'll be, hey, there's no data, if there's no data. Right? No, because quant mod would throw an error. Like, when you, if you go and try to scrape the data again. Or that day. Like, if you try to... Okay. That one might. I don't know. I don't know. That was very confusing. Okay. Very simple, then. Have you tried like try? Have you ever used try catch tried. or try? You've tried? Yeah. Okay. So try. Okay, library quant mod. So what's the day of this last weekend? Git symbols. So what is it from? Is that how you do it? 2015. Eleven two nine two equal nope twenty fifteen eleven two nine ah so if like and so just empty so like n row m m m So you could test one, yeah, so it's not going to, it does an error. Or you just do, or you do something dumb and say like. Well, that's useful though because when I try to rerun my function, one of the symbols was wrong or like something happened with the symbols when I tried to, to get the data again. Mm -hmm. I don't know if any, Jordan, did you run into an issue? No, I never run into issues. <laughs> Basically, I, I deleted the symbol and was like, I'm just going to move on. Like, that didn't happen. So, right now, I'm avoiding that, that whole stuff. That's, that's, what we, that's what we're teaching in grad school. Just, like, stop looking at errors and just keep going. I was like, I can't even, like, 